Why is the Federal Reserve operating at a loss? The Federal Reserve can operate at a loss for a number of reasons. Interest on reserves. The Federal Reserve pays interest on the reserves that banks hold at the Fed. When the Fed lowers interest rates, the interest it earns on its portfolio of assets, mainly U.S. Treasury securities, may be lower than the interest it pays on reserves, resulting in a loss. Monetary policy. The Federal Reserve may engage in monetary policy actions such as quantitative easing, QE, or large-scale asset purchases, LSAPs, to stimulate the economy. These actions can lead to the Federal Reserve holding large amounts of securities, which may not generate enough income to cover the interest payments on the reserves held by banks, resulting in a loss. Balance sheet normalization. When the economy recovers, the Fed may start to unwind its balance sheet by selling or letting mature its securities holdings. This can lead to a loss, as the Fed may have to sell securities at a loss. Foreign exchange. The Federal Reserve also holds foreign currencies as part of its foreign exchange operations, which can result in losses due to changes in exchange rates. It's important to note that the Federal Reserve is a unique institution and operates differently than a typical business. The Federal Reserve's primary goal is to achieve its monetary policy objectives and to maintain stability in the financial system. The Fed's losses are not a concern, as the Fed is not dependent on profits to operate, as it can create money as needed. The Fed returns its profits to the U.S. Treasury after it deducts its expenses, including the cost of operations and the payment of dividends to its member banks. Why did the Fed suffer losses? How long will they continue? The Federal Reserve has suffered losses in recent years due to a number of factors, including interest on reserves. The Federal Reserve pays interest on the reserves that banks hold at the Fed. When the Fed lowered interest rates to near zero to stimulate the economy during the 2008 financial crisis and the COVID-19 pandemic, the interest it earned on its portfolio of assets, mainly U.S. Treasury securities, was lower than the interest it paid on reserves, resulting in a loss. Monetary Policy The Federal Reserve engaged in monetary policy actions such as quantitative easing, QE, or large-scale asset purchases, LSAPs, to stimulate the economy. These actions led to the Federal Reserve holding large amounts of securities, which may not generate enough income to cover the interest payments on the reserves held by banks, resulting in a loss. Balance Sheet Normalization When the economy recovers, the Fed may start to unwind its balance sheet by selling or letting mature its securities holdings. This can lead to a loss, as the Fed may have to sell securities at a loss. It's difficult to predict how long the Federal Reserve will continue to suffer losses, as it depends on the economic conditions and the Federal Reserve's monetary policy actions. The Fed's losses are not a concern, as the Fed is not dependent on profits to operate, as it can create money as needed. The Fed returns its profits to the U.S. Treasury after it deducts its expenses, including the cost of operations and the payment of dividends to its member banks. The Fed's loss may continue as long as the interest rate remains low, but the Fed has tools to manage its balance sheet, such as adjusting the interest on reserves or adjusting the pace of asset purchases to minimize its losses. How do current losses compare to past remittances? It's difficult to make a direct comparison between current losses and past remittances as the Federal Reserve's financial results can be affected by a variety of factors such as interest rates, monetary policy actions, and economic conditions. However, in recent years, the Federal Reserve has experienced larger losses than in the past, due in part to the low interest rate environment and the monetary policy actions taken in response to the 2008 financial crisis and the COVID-19 pandemic. In the past, the Federal Reserve has typically earned a profit, which is then remitted to the U.S. Treasury. The Fed's net income comes primarily from the interest on U.S. government securities that it holds in its portfolio, as well as from its lending operations. However, in recent years, the Federal Reserve has experienced larger losses due to the low interest rate environment and the monetary policy actions taken in response to the 2008 financial crisis and the COVID-19 pandemic. For instance, in 2020, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, 
The Federal Reserve has increased its holdings of Treasury securities and mortgage-backed securities, and also lowered the interest rate to near zero, which led to a decrease in the interest income and an increase in the interest payments on reserves, resulting in a net loss of $4.4 billion. It's important to note that the Federal Reserve's primary goal is to achieve its monetary policy objectives and to maintain stability in the financial system, and not to generate profits. The Fed's losses are not a concern as the Fed is not dependent on profits to operate, as it can create money as needed. The Fed returns its profits to the U.S. Treasury after it deducts its expenses, including the cost of operations and the payment of dividends to its member banks. Will the Fed go bankrupt or need to be bailed out? The Federal Reserve is not a typical financial institution and is not subject to the same risks as a commercial bank. The Fed is an independent central bank that is not dependent on profits to operate and is not subject to bankruptcy or the need for a bailout. One of the key differences between the Fed and a commercial bank is that the Fed has the ability to create money, whereas commercial banks have to acquire funds through deposits or borrowing. This means that the Fed can always meet its financial obligations even if it experiences losses. Additionally, the Fed is also not a government agency and does not receive funding from Congress. The Fed's income comes primarily from the interest on U.S. government securities that it holds in its portfolio, as well as from its lending operations. The Fed returns its profits to the U.S. Treasury after it deducts its expenses, including the cost of operations and the payment of dividends to its member banks. Furthermore, the Federal Reserve is also an important part of the U.S.'s financial system, and its stability is essential to the stability of the entire economy. In the unlikely event that the Fed were to experience significant financial difficulties, the government would likely take steps to ensure its stability. In summary, the Federal Reserve is a unique institution that operates differently than a typical business, it is not subject to bankruptcy or the need for a bailout, and it is an important part of the U.S.'s financial system. Implications and Options The Federal Reserve's ability to meet its financial obligations and maintain its stability even if it experiences losses, means that there are no immediate implications for the economy or the financial system. The Fed can always meet its financial obligations by creating money, and it does not rely on profits to operate. However, if the Fed were to experience significant and prolonged losses, it could have implications for the U.S. Treasury and the federal budget. The Fed returns its profits to the U.S. Treasury after it deducts its expenses, including the cost of operations and the payment of dividends to its member banks. If the Fed were to experience significant and prolonged losses, the U.S. Treasury would not receive as much money from the Fed, which could have implications for the federal budget. In terms of options, the Federal Reserve has several tools at its disposal to manage its balance sheet, such as adjusting the interest on reserves, or adjusting the pace of asset purchases, to minimize its losses. The Fed also has the ability to use unconventional monetary policy tools such as forward guidance and negative interest rates, if necessary. Additionally, the Federal Reserve is an independent central bank, and its decisions are based on the best interest of the economy. It will not hesitate to use any tools at its disposal to achieve its monetary policy objectives and maintain stability in the financial system. It's important to note that the Fed's actions and decisions have an implication on the economy and the financial markets. The Fed's monetary policy decisions, such as setting interest rates, can affect borrowing costs, investment decisions, and overall economic activity. The Fed's balance sheet management decisions, such as the pace of asset purchases, can affect interest rates and the availability of credit in the economy. Additionally, the Fed's actions and decisions can also affect exchange rates and the value of the U.S. dollar, which can have implications for international trade and investment. It's important for investors and market participants to closely monitor the Fed's actions and decisions, and to understand the implications for their investments and overall financial plans. However, it's also important to remember that the Fed's decisions are based on the best interest of the economy and it will use any tools at its disposal to achieve its monetary policy objectives and maintain stability in the financial system. Implications and Options Implications on the economy and the financial markets The Fed's monetary policy decisions, such as setting interest rates, can affect borrowing costs, investment decisions, and overall economic activity. 
The Fed's balance sheet management decisions, such as the pace of asset purchases, can affect interest rates and the availability of credit in the economy. In terms of options, the Federal Reserve has several tools at its disposal to manage its balance sheet and achieve its monetary policy objectives. These include adjusting the interest on reserves. The Fed can adjust the interest rate it pays on reserves held by banks, which can affect the overall level of interest rates in the economy. Adjusting the pace of asset purchases. The Fed can adjust the pace of its asset purchases, which can affect the overall level of interest rates and the availability of credit in the economy. Forward guidance. The Fed can provide forward guidance on its future monetary policy actions, which can affect investor expectations and overall economic activity. Negative interest rates. The Fed can set negative interest rates on reserves held by banks, which can affect borrowing costs and overall economic activity. It's important to note that the Fed's decisions and actions are based on the best interest of the economy, and it will use any tools at its disposal to achieve its monetary policy objectives and maintain stability in the financial system. The Fed will also closely monitor economic and financial conditions, and make adjustments to its monetary policy as necessary. Additionally, the Fed also has the flexibility to use unconventional monetary policy tools such as forward guidance, large-scale asset purchases, LSAPs, and negative interest rates, if necessary. The Fed also has the authority to provide liquidity to the financial system, through lending facilities and other tools, to ensure the stability of the financial system. It's also important to note that the Fed's actions and decisions are closely monitored by Congress, and the Fed is accountable to Congress for its actions. The Fed is also subject to audits by the Government Accountability Office, GAO, and it regularly reports on its activities and operations to Congress. In conclusion, the Federal Reserve is a unique institution that operates differently than a typical business. It is not subject to bankruptcy or the need for a bailout, and it has multiple tools at its disposal to manage its balance sheet, achieve its monetary policy objectives, and maintain stability in the financial system. It's important to note that the Fed's actions and decisions have an implication on the economy and the financial markets, and the Fed closely monitors economic and financial conditions, and make adjustments to its monetary policy as necessary. How does a reverse repo work? A reverse repurchase agreement, also known as a reverse repo, is a financial transaction in which the Federal Reserve, Fed, borrows money from a counterparty, such as a bank or money market fund, by selling securities, typically treasury securities, to them with the agreement to repurchase the securities at a later date at a higher price. In other words, the Fed is essentially borrowing money overnight, using its securities as collateral. The reverse repo rate is the interest rate at which the Fed borrows money through this mechanism. This rate is used as a tool by the Fed to control the money supply and manage short-term interest rates. By setting the reverse repo rate, the Fed can control the amount of money in the financial system and affect the overall level of interest rates in the economy. When the Fed conducts a reverse repo, it temporarily drains money from the financial system and reduces the amount of reserves available to banks. This can be used as a tool to help the Fed to achieve its interest rate target and to control inflation. The Fed uses reverse repos to help manage short-term interest rates and to control the money supply. In summary, a reverse repo is a financial transaction in which the Fed borrows money by selling securities with the agreement to repurchase them at a later date at a higher price. This is a tool the Fed uses to control the money supply and manage short-term interest rates in the economy. The Fed acquired large holdings of low-yielding securities through quantitative easing, QE, to support the economy during the pandemic. For example, at the end of 2021, over 70% of its MBS holdings were issued in 2020 or 2021, and 70% had coupon rates of 2.5% or lower. What will they do next? The Federal Reserve's holdings of low-yielding securities, acquired through quantitative easing, QE, during the pandemic, may present a challenge for the Fed as it looks to manage its balance sheet and achieve its monetary policy objectives. The Fed has several options to consider as it looks to address this issue. Hold. The Fed could choose to hold onto its low-yielding securities and wait for interest rates to rise, which would boost the income it earns on its portfolio. 
Reduce holdings. The Fed could gradually sell or let mature its low-yielding securities, which would reduce its holdings and reduce the drag on its income. Reinvestment. The Fed could choose to reinvest the proceeds from maturing securities into higher-yielding securities, which would boost the income it earns on its portfolio. Yield Curve Control. The Fed could also engage in yield curve control, which is a monetary policy strategy that targets a specific level for the interest rate on a specific maturity of government bonds. By doing this, the Fed could influence the interest rate on its low-yielding securities and boost the income it earns on its portfolio. It's important to note that the Fed's decisions on how to manage its balance sheet will be based on the economic conditions and its monetary policy objectives. The Fed will also closely monitor economic and financial conditions, and make adjustments to its monetary policy as necessary. It's also worth noting that the Fed has announced that they will hold their current portfolio of Treasury securities and mortgage-backed securities acquired through QE and will continue to reinvest the principal payments from these securities into Treasury securities and mortgage-backed securities, to help maintain accommodative financial conditions. The Fed has also communicated that it will continue to use its full range of tools to support the economy and achieve its maximum employment and price stability goals. The Fed also will continue to provide clear communication and transparency to the public, and to adjust its tools as appropriate to achieve its objectives. It's important to remember that the Fed's decisions are based on the best interest of the economy, and it will use any tools at its disposal to achieve its monetary policy objectives and maintain stability in the financial system. The Fed's actions and decisions have an implication on the economy and the financial markets, and the Fed closely monitors economic and financial conditions, and make adjustments to its monetary policy as necessary.